So we're up earlier than usual and it's uh, 5.30 in the morning. So we're gonna take this car out on a nice big day out. So today we're off to the Isle of Egg, which is off the west coast of Scotland, just south of the Isle of Skye. This island is famous for a lot of reasons, but the thing which I'm most interested in is their renewable power which they have on the island. Now my trip to the Isle of Egg is inspired by a YouTuber that I recently discovered called Steve Marsh. He recently carried out a trip to the Isle of Egg as a day return trip from Edinburgh. And I thought to myself, if he can do that from Edinburgh, then I can do that from Aberdeenshire. Now Steve took the Calmac ferry from Malaig to Egg. But as you can see, the day return options on a weekend are limited to Saturdays quite late in the day. I chose a different option. This is a ferry from Arisaig run by a company called Arisaig Marine. They offer three day return options per week and then there's an additional day return option July and August. So the boat times arrive on the Isle of Egg at 11 o'clock and they depart at 4 o'clock giving you five hours on the island. That's plenty of time to climb the highest point on the island which is called Anskur and I've also got the opportunity to do a little bit of renewable power tourism as well. So my car journey from Aberdeenshire to Arisaig is quite long, 163 miles one way, 326 miles return. It's a big day out. Well, here we are at uh, Arisaig. So we're just going to turn left in here and uh, we'll try and get some, uh, some electricity charged up for this car. Well, here we are at the Arisaig Land, Sea and Islands Centre, not too far away from the uh, ferry terminal here. And uh, as you can see, uh, we're charging up on AC power. There's also a DC rapid charger here. Now, I wasn't sure whether this was going to work or not. The status on the ChargePlay Scotland app was uh, unknown, uh, but uh, it's, it's working. And uh, the difference between my last video showing this and uh, today is uh, the fact that I've got an RFID card. So all you have to do is tap on here to uh, start the charge and uh, you get uh, billed automatically. This costs £10 to purchase uh, from ChargePlay Scotland. Now, I only need to charge up uh, to about 60-62%. Uh, I got here with 45% charge, 162 miles, 235 watt hours per mile. Not bad considering I was driving into a headwind. Okay, so this rapid charger isn't quite so rapid. Uh, two things, number one, it's only 22 kilowatts. Uh, number two, it says DC not working, but there is a three phase AC outlet here. Now, of course the Teslas can only uh, take charge at uh, 11 kilowatts rather than 22. So if we have a look at this wall box, um, I'm charging at a rate of about six kilowatts. And the ChargePlay Scotland app says this is 22 kilowatts. So in other words, three phase, um, but it's not. If we have a look here at the data sheet, it says it's uh, two lots of 7.4 kilowatts. The uh, description does not match the app. So what I'm going to do is just simply leave my car charging whilst uh, getting on the ferry. Um, so it's a short walk to the ferry terminal, about five minutes. And uh, if we have a look the other way, we can see the Isle of Egg and we can see our target, which is a mountaintop called Anskur. So Arisaig is a very pretty village. The main street is right along the coast and there's a lovely view out from the main street right across uh, the Bay of Arisaig. It's a quiet village, at least when I visited it was quiet and it's got facilities which tourists will definitely appreciate. It's got restaurant, it's got cafe, it's got your co-op store, post office and public toilets as well. But this is also a working village. The harbour is a main focal point for the village as well and there's a lot of boats out of the water here as you can see. It's not just leisure and tourism boats which you have here, you've got fishing boats as well. So the fact that traditional industries are thriving here 
it adds a certain level of charm to the village as well. Now my ferry ticket tells me to check in at the ferry terminal which is also the cafe at the boatyard. Upon inquiry I was told nope you just simply turn up at the pier with your phone ticket and you'll be scanned in. So on my way down to the pier I was greeted with the sight of the ferry that will be taking us to the Isle of Egg. It's nowhere near as big as the ferry which uh, goes from Malaig but what it lacks in size, it more than makes up for in terms of speed and overall journey time. Hello, so at the boat, they weren't interested uh, in my Dyer. phone Taxi ticket Dyer. barcode at all. They just wanted my name and then right. they crossed me off the list. Perfect. And onto the boat right. I went. <laughs> So we cast our moorings free from the quayside at 10 o'clock and backed out into the sound of Arasaig. Our boat is called the Shearwater and it was making a speed probably in excess of 15 knots. We made our way out through the sound of Arasaig and then into open water where things became a lot rougher and I found myself exposed to a lot of sea spray sitting by the edge of the uh, boat. Soon enough though, the Isle of Egg was starting to loom ever more present and the waters became calmer. So we moored up at Galmisdale Quayside and then it was back onto firm dry land once more, but this time with a much fresher wind on our faces. Well, that's my boat and uh, now it's time to head up the track. I am quite damp after that trip. Uh, lots of spray being blown back onto the uh, open deck of the boat. So. Uh, if we have a look at uh, Amskur, we see it's covered completely in cloud. We do have blue skies though, um, so uh, it's just a, a very moist wind. So our ferry landed where the bike hire place is located on this map. It's not located at the place where the dotted lines are at the end of the much larger pier. So we're going to make our way up to the top of Amskur. And I've also illustrated on this map where the wind turbines and the solar panels are in the local vicinity. So the ferry pier is the social and business hub for the island. And as you can see, we've got some information boards about the egg electric scheme. So once you leave the ferry pier, you come across this track in this uh, woodland and it's full of bluebells and uh, bird life. It's really quite nice. I haven't uh, figured out what different colours uh, the uh, wee marks uh, represent, but uh, I'm certainly on the right track. So this is uh, going above the vehicle tracks now, and we're on to uh, proper off-road tracks. So having passed through the woodland, we get through this gate. Looking the other way, we've got open country. And looking over here, we have the wind turbines. Four wind turbines, each with a total output of 24 kilowatts in total, so six kilowatts each. So here we are at the uh, wind turbine station. Four of them. One of them out of action. And it's a fresh wind, so I'm guessing they are producing their rated six kilowatt output each. And they sound quite reminiscent of the uh, S92 helicopters, which I have when flying offshore. What we have here is the uh, uh, transformer box. And the thing to note is that there are no overhead cables. All the high voltage distribution cables from this transformer box and other power stations on the island are connected to the houses by underground 11 kilovolt cables. And it means you've got quite a different rural appearance to what you have with dwelling houses on the mainland of Scotland. It's a very uh, exposed location. You've got a good view out uh, west and you've got a good view south to uh, Ardnamurkin where I was in the new year. So there's a lot of fetch to be had uh, uh, from the wind in this particular location on the island. So as is uh, befitting for warm, moist wind, out in the sea, 
uh, the height level of the cloud is quite high but when you go this way you can see uh, we haven't got much uh, clear weather uh, to go before we're uh, having our heads in the clouds. I've been taking a shortcut from the wind turbines to the footpath. I wouldn't recommend it. So in addition to the wind turbines, we've also got 112 kilowatts of rated output from hydroelectric schemes. There are three schemes, the largest of which is 100 kilowatts, and the other two schemes are about six kilowatts each. So they produce a lot more hydroelectric power on this island compared to the 24 kilowatts of wind power. So requirements for funding of these projects stated that there needed to be free independent sources of renewable power. That is why the wind power was installed. It isn't a complementary technology to hydroelectric. You get your wind power at the same time as it rains a lot. So now we're following the footpath underneath the northern uh, cliffs of Anskur. It's quite a wet affair, I have to say. It's um, quite boggy. And as you can see, we're covered in the soup. So sooner or later, we will be turning left and heading up a slightly less steep spot on the, uh, on the north face of uh, Anskur. So we are now picking our way through the steep bit. Look up here, you can see what we've got ahead of us. And off to the right, this is where the footpath goes. Very calm on the north side. Uh, wind's all coming from the southwest. I'm pretty sure we're going to get blasted once we hit the ridge though. Not long later, we're just beneath the ridge here. We've passed our way through this man-made cleft. This is uh, the remnants of a defensive position on the uh, ridge of Anskur. But uh, we finally get to the ridge uh, very, very quickly. Soon we turn left on the ridge onto the steepest section, which is not quite scrambling, but it is quite steep. But the rocks are very grippy underfoot. Now all the way through my walk I was really hoping that the cloud would break free and would get uh, some clear weather. And as we neared the top I realised that really wasn't going to be happening. But what can I say? Look at the view around us. Isn't it amazing? Oh, I can see sky over there. Oh, there's rum. Oh yeah, there's the Ardamokan Peninsula. But not today. So soon after reaching the summit the rain came in. First slowly and then more heavily. I was optimistic and I thought it was just going to be a passing shower. And that was a mistake because I didn't put my waterproof trousers on. What then happened was that I then just got soaked to the skin. Once I got underneath the cloud level, it became very clear that the weather had changed completely. No longer were there any bright patches whatsoever. And what I'm doing is filming here whilst the weather's dry because my camera's not waterproof. And it wasn't long before the next rain shower came in and then the next one and then the next one. Now, the night before, the weather forecast was suggesting that the mainland would be rather wet, but the islands should have been fairly dry. But as you can see from the weather radar, the Isle of Skye got away relatively scot-free. But uh, the Isle of Egg got uh, quite a lot of rain in the early afternoon all the way through into the evening time. So here we've got the main solar power site on the Isle of Egg. We've got a good number of panels here. I'm not too sure what the rating of these panels are. They look like uh, 1.7 meter long panels. Uh, one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So we're talking about uh, about 48, now 96 panels uh, in one row, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. So we're talking over yeah, 900 panels. So I'll uh, look it up and see uh, what the rating is for this. But they look like uh, decent, uh, decent panels, that's for sure. 
these must be old panels. You can see there's a lot of uh, shrubs growing in between the panels and some of those shrubs will probably be um, causing partial shading at certain times of the year. Especially this one here. So this, I believe, is the main power station. That looks like a transformer bank. We've got a couple of diesel generators. Looks like a diesel tank at the back. Uh, there's another diesel generator just there behind the uh, trailer. Um, and uh, I believe this is rated at 64 kilowatts, all of these together. We've got this building here. There's uh, solar panels on the roof, both directions. It's uh, making a noise inside. I'm wondering if that's the hydroelectric house, uh, the power station house for the hydroelectric. But I'm not too sure what this building is. I suspect, um, I suspect that's a diesel generator house. Uh, just looking at this plaque on the wall, it says diesel fuel oil class A. So uh, it looks old though. So. That could just be a redundant uh, power station house. Now during the summer months when there are a lot more tourists on the island and there's a lot less wind and rain, solar at 48 kilowatts was insufficient to cover supply. Now solar power has been expanded to 120 kilowatts. That means that 98% of all of the electricity demand is supplied by renewable power now. And those diesel generators are only used for 2% of all of the electricity consumed now. Well, here I am, back at the uh, main hub for uh, the Isle of Egg. Uh, this is all uh, non-public roads. Um, you don't have any right to drive your uh, private vehicle uh, on the Isle of Egg. The only people who are permitted to drive here are local residents, contractors and blue badge holders. Everybody else is on foot but you can uh, use a bicycle and there is a bike hire shop right here and it looks like they have uh, electric bikes which is uh, quite interesting so that's looking like ordinary bikes but these ones here they've got these uh, electric pouches just here which I think I've seen on fully charged show once before so very interesting well after the rain, not a bad view for lunch. The wind had been picking up through the afternoon and I always get a bit nervous about ferries being cancelled and not picking us up and leaving us stranded, especially on day trips. But there had been plenty of time on the islands to do everything I wanted to do. Bit of a shame about the weather, but now it was time to get my damp and sodden state onto the ferry and get back to the mainland. <laughs> Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Uh, but uh, the Isle of Egg is a fascinating place. It's not just a story of renewable electricity. Um, they're also doing renewable wood. So their plan is to have forests which can sustain all of their firewood needs uh, for all of the households which they have and I think that's uh, really quite uh, fascinating but now I've got another problem my car did not complete its charge it's only charged up to 53% and that leaves me 2% sh short of uh, being able to get home based on the performance of my drive out here so I need to stop for fish chips and charger on the way home. When I got back to the car I found that the charger was completely dead. It was almost like somebody actually switched off the power to the uh, electric car charger. 53% corresponds to the time when the business actually opened up so I've got my suspicions. In spite of that it wasn't a disaster. What I was going to do was uh, stop at Abalawa on the way back home get some charge and also get some food. And I wouldn't need that much charge to complete my remaining journey back home. Right, we're in Abilawa and we're going to pull into this charger just here. 
and we are going to get some charge and I am going to buy some food. We're at 10% charge. We're predicted to get home with 0% if we don't charge up. And we will do that. And we will get my charger. This, right, let's be on our way. So this is rare. Having a rapid charger with street side parking but this is um, ideal, personally. You can just make a, a very quick pit stop. You don't have to faff about with uh, car parks trying to figure out if something's spare. This has got uh, Chardamo, it's got uh, DCS, um, and it's got uh, Type 2 AC, 43 kilowatts. I didn't even know you could do uh, uh, 43 kilowatts out of AC, but uh, I know the uh, Tesla certainly can't. Um, so let's look at the data sheet. Doing the same thing as Bjorn Newland, I suppose you could say. So what have we got? 96 kilowatts input, 43 kilowatts output, and then we've got 50 kilowatts output. Now, my car is charging only at 42 kilowatts. And one of the things that Bjorn has discovered is that uh, eight kilowatts is actually used for heating the battery, which is a bit annoying, to be honest. I want all of the uh, charge to be spent uh, on the battery. Anyway, I've got my food, pizza tonight, um, and uh, I don't have long to, to wait, just another three or four minutes and then we're good to go. So, we're now charged up to 18%. I'm not uh, wasting too much money on, on charge, but that should give us uh, sufficient charge to get back home with 8% battery. And that's how you use chargers. Um, you, you just use just enough charge to get you to your final destination. Uh, any more and uh, I'm wasting money. So the most impressive thing about this day is the cost of the whole trip. It's £23.32. Of that, £22 was the ferry return ticket. Now with my old Volkswagen Golf, this would cost me 35 litres of diesel alone. Just under £60 worth of diesel, plus the cost of a ferry ticket, £82. I think you can see the advantage in having an electric car here. Right, well, here we are. Home sweet home. And that's us with 8% charge. Okay, so let's uh, wrap this thing up. Well, I enjoyed that day out despite the uh, bad weather. I learned, I've always wanted to go and see Egg and uh, what they had for, to uh, say for themselves in terms of renewable power. And uh, I'm glad I did that. Would I do this in a diesel car? I don't think I would. But in, a, in an electric car, the cost of driving over there is just so cheap. And the real cost is one of time. Now. When it comes to seven hours of driving in England on motorways, it's a bit of a pain. But when you're talking seven hours of driving on the uh, Highland Road, it's good fun. And uh, that's, that's part of the, uh, the day out as well. So in terms of future videos, uh, I've got a holiday coming up and I'm gonna be uh, uh, discussing the performance of my Tesla Model 3 in that holiday. Um, the good news is that my battery is now in the village with my electrician. He's just trying to find some time in his busy schedule to fit me in. So I'm hoping there'll be a video on that coming up soon. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.